Hello my fellow vault dwellers and wasteland wanderers. My name's Azkriel and today we're going to jump headlong into mutations. So put your freak hats on and let's waste no more time because we start right now. As you can see, I've been playing in the radiation attach, so I can attest to the fact that these methods definitely work. I do have to add a disclaimer here though, as the mutations gained through straight up radiation exposure are completely random. So to quote Forrest Gump, you never know what you're going to get. There are a total of 18 mutations to date. Some good, some quite frankly ridiculous, some just straight up underwhelming. I will however go through the entire list at the end of the video for anyone that's interested in detailed descriptions. Anybody that might be on the fence about mutations, well this is what they can do and well, that was a death claw. First things first, we need to talk perks. Three in particular. Class Freak, Starch Genes and Strange in Numbers. First cab off the rank however is Starch Genes, available from the Luck Tree at level 30. Starch Genes is a 2 rank perk, the first rank reduces our chance of gaining a mutation through radiation exposure by 50%. It also lowers our chance of removing an existing mutation with Radaway by 50%. Rank 2 grants total immunity to both gaining or removing mutations. Starch Genes gives us the ability to put mutations into our actual character build instead of just picking up or losing one randomly making this an absolute must have if you plan on keeping those amazing mutation buffs. For those social mutants out there, level 42 brings us the Charisma perk card Strange in Numbers. It boosts the positive effects of mutations by 25% and when shared with others seems to stack up for some, well, pretty interesting effects which I have no doubt that the Nerf Bat might find that one wanting in a patch or two. Either way, a 25% bonus if you are grouped with other mutants is nothing to be sneezed at. Finally, and possibly our most important, is Class Freak, a luck skill available at level 46. This bad boy reduces the negative effects of mutations by 25% per level, stacking out for a whopping 75% reduction. So you don't want to trade 4 intelligence points so that you can superman over buildings? Well, with Class Freak you don't have to, you reduce that to just a single point of your smarts. A pretty fair trade in my opinion. So with housekeeping out of the way, let's get to the good bit. Playing in the radiation at Emmett Mountain Disposal Site. This is the first of three methods I've used with mm, somewhat mixed results. There are a few, mm, well, we'll call them more creative ways of getting the job done, but for simplicity reasons, these are my three top picks. The main reason I chose Emmett Mountain Disposal Site is convenience. It's centrally located, it has a source of radiation and a decontamination shower. This method will however work at any site that has a radiation source and a shower, such as some of the mines and the power plants that have a shower bolted to their reactor rooms. Now for those of you that have been paying attention to the footage in the background, you can see that this method is pretty simple. We just remove starch genes, stand next to our rad source till we hopefully mutate. Once we do, we put starch genes back on. Don't forget this step. You will cry as your mutations disappear if you do. Then we simply step into the shower and clear our rads. Once we've cleared our rads, however, we need to log out as you can only gain one mutation per session. We can, however, get around this all we need to do is log out and log back in again. I'm sure there's a joke in there somewhere, but, you know. 
This is a thrifty method. The upside is you're not throwing huge amounts of caps away on rad away. The downside is the rads are pretty low so it's slow going. Which brings us to option two and it's not for the cap shy or if you like me you just wound up with a huge stash of rad away from ghoul farming. Easiest place to find them in abundance of course is the White Spring Resort. The downside of this method of course is you really need to be awake because if you're not you're going to die really really fast. Also lag sucks and yep yep that just happened. Option 2 takes us to the Federal Disposal Field HZ21 workshop which is in the southernmost region of the Savage Divide. Now in this clip I'm wearing Trapper's Armour which has a relatively decent amount of rad resist because if you're not wearing any the nuclear waste will hit you with over 100 rads per second which coupled with a little bit of lag yeah you're gonna die pretty quick. As with method 1, mutations gained this way are still completely random. I did however notice that the higher rads seem to cause mutations much earlier. So instead of basically almost killing myself, or well, killing myself in some cases, I often got my next mutation as early as 75% remaining health. Which, quite a lot quicker. The basic method behind method 2 is fundamentally the same as method 1. Take off starch genes, swim in nuclear waste till we mutate, <laughs> uh, get out of our radiation bath before we die, reapply starch genes, and then use rad away to wipe away our rads. Log out, rinse, repeat. This method exposes us to up to 10 times the radiation levels as if we were using the nuclear waste barrels at Mount Emmett. As such, it is significantly faster. Time from loading in to mutations is around 50 seconds at times. There are also less enemies to deal with each time you log in, so less of a delay between each mutation acquisition. The longest part of this process, however, is the login and outloading screens. So, maybe take a few funny pictures to entertain yourself before you start, because depending on what or how many mutations you want, you are going to be seeing a lot of loading screens. The bonus of method 2 over method 1 is not only sheer speed, but you can collect nuclear material as you go. The drawback unfortunately is you need right away. Lots and lots of right away. Now there is a slightly less random way of acquiring mutations as well. You can of course buy them from the Enclave. Now to get to the Enclave you need to trip the quest Bunker Busters, which if you go to the abandoned waste dump, which is here on your map, wander inside and have a look at the elevator that's inside, it will trip the quest for you. Now, I dragged an alt through this quest at level 12, so as far as I can tell there's not actually a level restriction on this, so you can get access to the Enclave pretty much as early as you like, as long as you've got some really nice friend to, well, kill the little pets that are in here because, well, I don't think my level 12 was about to murder a Deathclaw matriarch. Now, I'm not going to walk you all the way through joining the Enclave as that's a video all unto itself, but I will show you which vendor you need to visit as the Enclave has several different vendors and each of them sell different items ranging from medical supplies right through to the serums, jetpacks, plans. It can get a little confusing. Once you've done the quest and joined the Enclave, they'll give you access to their back door. Giggity. Now, on the map, this is labelled as the White Spring Service Entrance, and from here we go and we'll use the hand pad. 
Now, don't get any ideas about just waiting at the door for somebody to let you in because these lovely blue lasers here will be bright red and, well, let's just say I may have tried to sneak an alt in and no, no, it didn't work. Once inside, we'll go through the decontamination showers. We'll hang a right and head down the stairs following the signs on the walls. At the bottom of the stairs, you'll find the science wing, which, lo and behold, has another set of decontamination showers. Now, after accidentally wiping away a mutation or two, you will not only double, but you will triple check that you, in fact, have starch genes on. Just trust me, those things just make me nervous now. Then in the back right hand corner we have the vendor we are after where we can simply buy individual serums which as a disclaimer are very expensive though with a bit more charisma and some great mentats you can knock it down to about 3500. Props to reddit user Prospector, I'm probably butchering that but sorry. Uh, now, props again for sharing this info because you can in fact get serum recipes as a rare drop, and I mean rare drop from the Scorch Beast Queen, which of course makes them craftable and of course tradable. So possibly check out your local community boards, discord channels, etc. and see if someone might have one for you. I've heard of them going as cheap as 500 caps, which is a massive difference. Now that we know how to get them, let's go over the mutations and exactly what they actually do. Each mutation of course comes with a buff and a drawback. Adrenal Reaction, for example, gives a sliding scale damage buff to lower your hit points, much like the bloody legendary effect, and yeah, they stack. The drawback though of course is minus 50 health, which you can reduce to a mere negative 12 with 3 points in class freak. Remember that perk we talked about before? Well worth it. So let's get stuck into it. Bird bones, plus 4 intelligence, and falling from heights is more gradual. Less face plants, always useful. Minus 4 strength, reduced to 1 with class freak. Carnivore, meat provides double the benefits, and eating the raw version will not cause disease. The drawback, can't eat vegetables. Sounds like a teenager's dream right there. Now I need to stress, this doesn't affect buffs, so your plus two from your death gloss to take doesn't double out to four. That'd be badass if it did. However, meat will fill you up more. Herbivore, of course, being the flip side where you get double from vegetables and can't eat meat. Chameleon. While unarmored, yep, you gotta be naked and standing still, you will gain of invisibility. Now, disclaimer, there is an armor set called Weightless, 90% reduced weight, and here's the bonus, doesn't affect this mutation. So yes, there is armor out there that you can in fact wear and still have this mutation work. Eagle Eyes, plus 25% critical damage and plus four perception. Drawback, minus 4 strength. Again, class freak will drop this to just 1 point. But for those of you that are using ranged weapons, strength probably not going to mean a great deal to you anyway. Egghead, plus 6 intelligence, minus 3 strength, minus 3 endurance. Reducible down to 1 and 1 with class freak. Electrically charged and unstable isotope. These two are basically the same thing. One's electrical damage, the other is radiation damage. Both of them will zap your target when hit in melee. The problem being it won't even do enough damage to kill a rad roach, which is quite sad, really. And the other problem being is if you're standing in somebody's base and they hit you, the small explosion will actually do damage to their base, thus flagging you as wanted. Not a good thing, found that out the hard way, slugging my alt one. 
The bad part about these two, other than the whole wanted thing, of course, is also the fact that these will both zap or irradiate you as well. So, buyer beware. Empath. Now, this one's a bit of a controversial one, because while your teammates take minus 25% damage, you take an extra 33%. Now, I have had a discussion to the effect of apparently the minus 25 stacks. So if you've got a four-person empath team, the damage reduction is actually quite big. Again, I haven't confirmed this one myself, so take it with a grain of salt. However, that would be pretty badass. Next up we have Grounded, which will give you a pretty sizable 100 energy resistance at the cost of minus 20% energy damage. So probably not for you if you like to use the big Gatling Plasma or Laser or, well, any of the energy weapons for that matter. Healing Factor's up next and will give you a pretty massive 300% bonus to your health regeneration and I can't stress this enough, outside of combat. This has no effect in combat. The downside of this one is minus 55% chem effects. Now, I had a play with this one for a little while. Yes, it's nice to basically never have to heal yourself, but it's not going to work for any of the bloodied or adrenal reaction builds because healing is bad. Not only that, it affects stim packs, so lessening your healing never a good thing herd mentality is pretty self-explanatory if you're in a group you get plus two to all of your stats if you're not in a group you get minus two to all of your stats can be good if you're grouped up a lot but if you're a solo player it's probably not for you Next on the list, Marsupial, plus 20 carry weight and improved jump height. Now, as you've been seeing, my character X23 here, he's clearly got Marsupial, and the height's pretty nice. Now, for the sake of, if you have Class Freak losing one intellect, really not a big deal, because this is by far the single most fun mutation you are going to ever have. If you roll another character and you don't have marsupial, let's just say you, you're going to miss it. A lot. Next up's Plague Walker. You get a Poison Aura scaling with how many diseases you've got that apparently has a ceiling of just four diseases. It's only active, of course, when you have diseases. The drawback being, you need to have diseases. I have yet to come across a good disease in this game. They all suck. Then we have Scaly Skin. This will give you plus 50 damage and energy resistance, which is sweet for the unarmed builds. I use it for X23 here, and it's an absolute godsend. The drawback, minus 50 AP. With Class Freak, it's dropped to 12, so it's not particularly much of a sacrifice for what you get out of it. Another one of my personal favourites is Speed Demon, because not only do you reload faster, but you run 20% faster in the trade-off. You get a bit thirsty and hungry, so, eh. Again, Class Freak slows the negative down here, so the negative is negligible. I've played with this one a lot and getting to charge around at crazy speeds, this clip for example, is not sped up at all. It's just fun fun fun. Next off the rank is Talons, which increases unarmed attacks by 25% and will cause your target to bleed for 5 seconds. Drawback, minus 4 agility. This one's pretty situational, obviously, and only some builds are going to use it, but it's actually really, really good. Twisted Muscles is, of course, 25% to all melee damage and a better chance to cripple enemy limbs. Drawback, minus 50% gun accuracy. For those that don't know, Talons and Twisted Muscles stack for a whopping great 50% bonus damage, which is quite nice. As you can see, I one-shot a lot of stuff. 
And of course, that's about all she wrote on mutations. So, my name's Azkriel, don't forget to like and subscribe, and I will see you all next time. Thank you.